why did I destroy that USB-C cable? And how can we get this guy to set off some grow lights remotely in a hothouse? Let's get started. Recently, we got some more, well, new solar panels on the roof. So we are transitioning to maybe being a little bit more self-reliant because the grid around here is pretty flaky. Uh, last year, we had an outage of 27 hours and uh, some of us work from home. Uh, some of us enjoy being at home and having power and internet. So uh, we uh, looked at the 13 old solar panels that were on the roof and we got rid of them. Uh, I guess they're probably about 12 years old. So they came off and these new super duper, and of course, you know, the technology is changing very, very quickly. So these new super duper ones arrived uh, they went on and we topped it off with some uh, batteries. So we put some batteries in and we monitored it for a couple of weeks and then we put another extra couple of batteries in. And so now we're able to do things like charge the car, run the house, um, connect to the internet, you know, do the dishes. I don't know, all these sorts of things, have showers, all the normal things. But there is a, um, a considerable saving in terms of what we're pulling off the grid. In fact, most days we're putting back into the grid or you know it'll we'll see what happens over winter but at the moment it's pretty good uh, and we can also um, charging the car means that we're not paying any fuel at the moment as well and so maybe over time that will also be a saving but uh, in this whole process 13 panels came off the roof and I thought well I'm not going to just throw them out because a uh, little multimeter action showed them to be still running at 32 volts and pumping out I think from memory around about seven amps or something like that so yeah they're old uh, and not top of the range but I'm thinking for a few of the sheds around we've got uh, around the place including a hot house a chook house um, and uh, you know a shed up the back uh, that could be still useful in fact the main system uh, particularly in places like Tasmania, can rely on uh, having a generator in the background that comes on, you know, at the very worst times of winter and backs up the battery. I'm thinking, well, that's sort of defeats the purpose. And so the old solar panels will be sitting up the back. Uh, maybe, uh, I've, well, I've got some lithium iron phos uh, phosphate batteries coming in, so maybe that will be the generator. So that can sit there. And that will be the battery backup. It's early days anyway. But let's concentrate on what this is in front of me. So this came in a couple of weeks ago. And ultimately, I think something like this will be maybe in or close to the hothouse. So it is a device that you can access. I believe there's probably an ESP32 in there. And uh, and then using something like Home Assistant or what have you, you can maybe control it uh, from the outside. And what that means is, is that you can monitor things like the uh, temperature, the humidity. Uh, you can monitor uh, soil. Uh, you could monitor all sorts of things. And you could actuate things like, oh, I'm going to need a bigger, is that? Yeah, that is Philip said, but that is way too small. Uh, let me get back to you um, and we'll continue the conversation. All right, you don't have to have the annoying plastic box, but <laughs> but there it is. I mean, there's some protection. It's not, it's not, a bad, it's not such a bad thing. All right, so I think it's called, let me just turn this guy around. Oh, there's room for a button battery backup there. That's always a good thing. It's called a KC868, and this is the A6 version. I think there's also, I want to say A8, but I'm definitely seeing an A16, and that just refers to the number of relays you have here uh, for controlling devices on the outside. So there's your connections all on here. And then there's a number of inputs as well, which is probably the, uh, the other side here, analog and digital. Uh, and there's our ESP, what is that? That is, an, oh, that's an ESP32, uh, so that's terrific. So a bit of grunt there. Um, and then um, I'm hoping that this will sit in the hothouse, monitor things like what's coming in and, and what needs to be done. And then these guys will drive things like, um, let's say a pump or, 
um, maybe just a valve, because uh, I've got a tank up in the top. Um, this, it's a slab outside of the old shed, and um, that will collect water off the shed, and then it'll be gravity fed down to the hothouse, and maybe all we need to water the plants down there, given that it's about a probably two and a half, three meter drop, is maybe just a valve. Uh, but also you could hook up a pump to it as well. Um, and then in, I've also got, um, it's uh, an actuator that will be able to perhaps open and close uh, some of the louvers at the top of the hothouse in response to the temperature. Now that sounds strange in Tasmania, but in fact, I have monitored the temperature in there up to 65 degrees, even in uh, on some winter days where there's some sunshine around. And so very efficient hothouse, not so good for the plant. So you do need to be able to open uh, doors and windows and things like that. So I'm thinking that this guy will do it. Looks like it's optocoupler protected here, which is awesome. And some other bits and pieces, which I have no idea about. I will link up a video to possibly, I think the manufacturers, because the manufacturers, Kim Coney here, have produced a lot of good videos. So hopefully there's a playlist or something I can uh, link you to so you can have a bit of an explore. But for today, what are we doing in today's video? I would like to see if it A, has power, works, um, and that sort of stuff. And then maybe uh, I've just got another idea. It's because Tasmanian winter days are pretty short. Well, winter days are short everywhere, aren't they? But uh, usable sunlight is perhaps not great. I thought it would be maybe useful to um, have some grow lights. Uh, and so if we can maybe do something like program the ESP32 to activate a relay to turn on some grow lights, I would consider that um, a good start to the project. So let's do that. We'll get some power on it. Um, I'm not sure if I've got a button battery to match that or even if we need it if it's powered. Um, looks like a USB-C here, so that's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we'll try and um, program that. Uh, probably via these headers, I would say here. So I've got some, I've got some viewing of videos to do as well. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. Let's get to it. So that was a little bit fiddly, not too fiddly, not too bad. Uh, I'm just going to run example web server code on this at the moment, and I got that from the Kinconi website. So I will uh, put the link up for that on the blog and on here as well. And um, what else do I have to do? I had to download something called a PCF8 something or other uh, library as well, which was pretty easy to find, so that was no big deal. Um, and I'll link that in as well. And uh, and then that just allows you to run the uh, the web service. That's fine. Just point it at your uh, Wi-Fi and everything's fine. Ultimately, I don't want to do this, of course. What I want to do is uh, run Home Assistant probably on a single board computer, probably the Raspberry Pi 5, um, which would seem to be the simplest, I guess. And uh, But for the moment, we just need to know whether this board works. So it was pretty straightforward. Um, loaded up via the USB-C here. Now, there was a slight problem with that, and it's nobody else's fault except for the people that manufactured the USB-C cable because it was power only and not data as well. So that particular cable uh, will be properly filed away. Whereas uh, the new cable was able to upload fine through this USB-C port. Uh, and then ultimately at the end of the day, you could just, uh, and it goes, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six relays on this board. Uh, and there you go. So we can see that that turns on that light, turns off the light, satisfying clicks all around, uh, and that's pretty good. I guess the next thing to do, I guess just for, again, completeness, is to connect this up. Uh, this is the grow light strip, and uh, and then I think we'll be just about done. For will this be useful or not? At this point, I'm going to say yes, but uh, let's get some grow lights going, and we'll go from there. Uh, so this would give any USB regulator around the planet a conniption attack. So apologies to those people, <laughs> male, female, female, male, bear wires. And having uh, just destroyed a power-only USB cable, here I am creating a power-only USB cable. Who to thunk it? But anyway, um, yeah, let's get these grow lights on. So scenario, middle of a Tasmanian winter, 
don't want to go out into the hothouse to turn on the grow lights to extend the day a little bit. So via the server, via the ESP32, via the home assistant, however, uh, grow lights are activated. Happy days, we all get tomatoes and basil to make our sauces and whatnot. So um, yeah, I'm going to call that the uh, circuit working for this week. You'll see this a lot more, I think, over the next uh, few days, weeks and months. And um, yeah, we'll catch you next time.